the president was honored by the 9-0 decision that allows him to use an important tool to protect our nation's homeland. Uh, his number one responsibility as commander-in-chief is to keep the American people safe, and that's exactly what this executive order does. I want to bring in uh, Sean Spicer there from the White House a bit earlier today. I want to bring in the map which shows the six countries affected. It includes Libya, Sudan, Yemen, Somalia, and Syria. Remember, Iraq had been on that list originally last winter, but then it was removed um, when they went forward with version 2.0. I want to bring in the panel Jonah Goldberg, senior editor, National Review, A.B. Stoddard, associate editor, Real Clear Politics, and Molly Hemingway, senior editor, The Federalist, fresh in from the American. West. Good evening to all three of you. A White House victory here. Jonah, start. Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely right. This was politically a win and a vindication for Donald Trump and for the, the travel ban. But, you know, it was also a win for the plain letter of the law. Uh, part of the reason why uh, this was such a clear win for the White House is that the White House was just on the right side of a constitutional and legal argument. Uh, the president has plenipotentiary power to run immigration in the name of national security going back to the 1950s. It's not necessarily a constitutional power, although it is. It's, it's a statute. And the Ninth Circuit Court opinion, I think the, the Fourth Circuit Court opinion, were just really bad and clearly very political decisions. And uh, it would have been a huge mess if the Supreme Court had not clarified that the president, in fact, does have these powers. And um, at the same time, you know, it, it did trim back certainly some of the more expansive ideas of what this ban is supposed to be. You can't, people, people from these countries can come in, they just need to have a good reason. So the Constitution gives them the right to do it, but these right. other courts back in February and March, I mean, we were sitting here listening to them. They didn't think so much, Molly. Oh, but these rulings were kind of ridiculous. They weren't reading the plain letter of the law. They were going through Donald Trump's campaign tweets and trying to ascertain some deeper meaning. And that was very bad precedent to set. This idea that we can judge Donald Trump differently than we judge all other political leaders. So this was a very important win. But I also want to point out that there was, was an important win for religious liberty today. And a big reason why a lot of people voted for Donald Trump was for the Supreme Court to protect religious liberty. There was the huge case Trinity Lutheran. There's also the news that they're going to take up a very important uh, case about free expression when it comes to um, the cake baker in college. Colorado. So just in general, this was a good day for Donald Trump. Let me read the statement, A.B., and you can react to it on screen for our viewers. Today's unanimous Supreme Court decision is a clear victory for our national security. This is from the president earlier today. As president, I cannot allow people into our country who want to do us harm. My number one responsibility as commander-in-chief is to keep the American people safe. Today's ruling allows me to use an important tool for protecting our nation's homeland. I'm also particularly gratified that the Supreme Court's decision was 9-0. Well, I think it was definitely a victory for the president. Uh, I, it doesn't really tell us what will happen when they consider this in full in the fall, but it looks good. Most importantly, so it was policy victory, and it was a validation of policy. It was not just uh, a win in a special district, uh, a special election in a district where Republicans, you know, were favored, or a good justice that you put on the Supreme Court, or um, a good day when someone uh, messes up their testimony. It wasn't a political victory; it was a policy victory, and I think he really needs one. And I think it was really uh, it's going to give him a very good boost. The next thing that's really important is the way that the the, the way that this was launched was really kind of a botched disaster. So it's an opportunity to show some competence. And if they are organized and ready to reimpose this ban and do it effectively over the days and weeks to come, this will be another also um, a, a, a sort of a separate victor, victory for him in terms of their governance and their, their um, collective organization in contrast to the way that it went in January. Uh, we know it's a 72-hour rollout now, which was not the case originally. No, that's rollout. right. And there is a certain amount of, I think, G Chief Justice Roberts kicking the can down the road by doing it this way. It upholds this thing in principle, but as A.B. says, by the time this actually gets there, the 90 days will be up. Who knows what the official policy will be? Um, and uh, we may come back to see a very different situation on the you know, legal situation. Uh, Molly was touching on some of the other rulings today for the Supreme Court. Just in an overall sense, I want to play a Democrat from Hawaii, uh, Congresswoman Hirona, um, on MSNBC a bit earlier today, and just see how this has been characterized now that you have Neil Gorsuch and a complete plate of nine justices when she said this.
Or Neil Gorsuch, who I did not support as a Supreme Court justice. He's joined two of the most conservative justices, Clarence Thomas and uh, Alito, on the court to take the position that the entire injunction should have been lifted. This is like the three horsemen of the apocalypse, and they're waiting for the fourth one to come along so that they can go on their trend toward what I call extremism. Um, uh, here we go on day one. Um, that's I'm some loaded answers. Three horsemen, the apocalypse. And what I call extremism. Is this the way this is going to go, Molly? Yeah, well, that certainly does sound like some extreme rhetoric in response to these decisions that we saw today, which in fact showed quite a few justices really focusing on constitutional jurisprudence. It was a great and exciting day for Gorsuch watchers. People knew from his record that he was a strong constitutionalist, but just to be able to see him in action was key. One of the things that I thought was really interesting is that he wanted the court to actually protect Second Amendment freedoms or to hear a Second Amendment case. That they decided not to, which was which was very unfortunate for people who care about Second Amendment issues. So you have free expression issues in the First Amendment, uh, Second Amendment issues, and then you also have uh, his 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 position on this travel ban. All very comforting to people who are hoping for a good justice do, for a do, long time to do come. Do we get the sense the court changed today, AB? Well, I, I think again. I mean. It, I don't think we can read into the numbers are good for Trump, but I don't think we can read into what this is going to mean um, go, going forward. I mean, I, I think that it's, you know, it, there might be some surprises. Kennedy's not retiring. Everyone mm -hmm. is hoping that that, that would happen. But um, I think it's 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 going through a transition quickly on the on the senator's rhetoric, if, if I may. Uh, the Democrats are doing the best that they can to repel every voter they've lost and uh, every swing and independent voter. Hillary Clinton in the last couple of days called the Republicans the death party, and they're actually trying to sort of mirror Trump. If he can talk that way, two wrongs are going to make a wrong. I, I, I'm absolutely blown away by what she said. Well, Jonah? You know, I think that's right, and I guess we'll have an opportunity to get back to the Democrats in the next panel, but um, I think no, that... You can... You can well, no, my, 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 we I, I agree entirely with A.V. I think of the apocalypse. Well, no, the, the rhetoric of the Democrats in the last couple, particularly on the health care stuff, is so outrageous um, and so disproportionate. Um, you know, it is, they're basically saying that any attempt to do entitlement reform is murder. It's tantamount to murder now. And, um, and I, but I just wanted to say on the question about the Supreme Court, uh, you know, I was reading Gorsuch's you know, decision today on the religious liberty case and, and in terms of the Trinity Church. And one of the things he demonstrated is that he might be as entertaining and as good a writer as Scalia. And people forget that Scalia's role in the court wasn't just as a conservative vote, it was also as this great expositor of conservative ideas, of he sort of pr provided sort of uh, intellectual light shows that captured the people's attention and that framed the debate. And Gorsuch gives a hint that he may be as, as good as that. He, as he, was, he was billed that way, and yeah. so you're saying that he... And it's very rare that, that conservative appointees actually pan out to be yeah. <laughs> what they were billed for. Molly. Billed and as. Speaking of rhetoric, one of the other issues that's interesting, that travel ban issue implicitly recognizes that the government has a likely uh, win on that. But a lot of people are calling for Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg to recuse herself because she was so outspoken against that ban and against uh, President Trump during the campaign specifically related to that. So it'll be interesting to watch that and see whether she does we, recuse or whether it even matters. It was a 120-day temporary ban where the administration wanted to pull back from these now six countries, A.B. And now we may not have a decision on this for 10 11 months down the road. Well, I mean, as Jonah said, the, the timeline is going to expire. I think it still validates his policy today. And I think it's, it's, he's going to take the victory that he has today, whether, whether or not. Look, they haven't even begun the extreme vetting that they promised. This is not a perfect situation, but this is a policy victory for Donald Trump. He should take what he gets. Okay.